All right. I'd like to call this meeting of the West Los Angeles School Board to order. Suzette, can you please have the roll? Yes. Mr. Ustruck. Here. Mr. Keller. Here. Mrs. Carr. Here. Mr. Sickage is excused. Mr. Burns. Present. Mrs. Kaiser is excused. Ms. Deal. Here. Mrs. Justum. Brandon, let me know if she joins, please. And President Lee. Here. All right. So thank you very much, everyone. This evening we have the workshop. But before that, uh, we have a tribute to our outgoing board members um, for Ms. Heather Justum and for Mr. Bill Ustruck. So we have a tribute, uh, which Ms. Ustruck, you have in front of yourself there. Um, so I'm going to uh, read that into the record right now, uh, just so everyone can uh, hear it. And we can thank you for your service here for the West Los Angeles School District. So where is the conclusion of public service of Bill Ustruck, Board of Education member, School District of West Los Angeles et al. On Monday, April 18th, 2022, will historically be recorded as being a total of six years of significant educational contributions to this school district. And whereas he has, with exceptional spirit, self dedication, and a community minded philosophy, contributed significantly to the development and enrichment of the educational and recreational programs of this school district to the end that those who participated have grown in knowledge, skills, and the enjoyment of living. And whereas during his tenure of service to the school district and community, he did provide strong leadership, guidance, and management skills to improve the instructional and recreational programs while filling the following positions as a school board member. Committee chair for the College and Career Readiness Committee, four years. Committee vice chair for the employee, I'm sorry, employee, employment, employee engagement and culture, one year. And Recreation and Community Services Committee, four years and a committee member for the Recreation and Community Services uh, Committee for two years. Bill also provided countless hours of research and effort in the constant improvement of the educational and recreational programs for this school district. And whereas his example of public commitment, unfailing energy and intellectual curiosity has provided inspiration and admiration for all whose lives have been touched by, by association with him. And in particular to his many Board of Education colleagues and members of the educational profession. Now, therefore be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Education of the School District of West Dallas, West Milwaukee et al, honor this man for his notable contributions to the fields of public education and public recreation by his self-dedication to the principle of public service, his professional integrity, his personal interest in the education and recreational needs of the school district, and that this expression of our warm appreciation and affection be formally recorded and presented to Bill Ustruck, and be it further resolved that a copy of this testimonial be formally recorded in the official minutes of the Board of Education of the West Dallas, West of the School District of West Dallas, West Milwaukee et al. Bill, thank you very much for your service. You want to give the opportunity if there's anything you want to say at this point? No, it was it was a good ride. <laughs> I think we did some great things. So six years goes by pretty quick. So now I'm gonna enjoy the kids a little bit. Coach some baseball. I'll be around. Yeah, I won't be angry. Okay. I'll be happy. I'll be here to help. Well, that's good. We need that. Yes. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very Thank much, you. Bill. All right. So we also have an outgoing tribute to uh, Ms. Heather Justum, who is also outgoing this uh, uh, at this point. So I'll read that into the record as well. Whereas the conclusion of public service of Heather Justum, Board of Education member, School District of West Dallas, Wismaki et al. on Monday, April 18th, 2022, will historically be recorded as being a total of six years of significant educational contributions to this school district. And whereas she has, with exceptional spirit, self-dedication, and a community-minded philosophy, contributed significantly to the development and enrichment of the educational and recreational programs of this school district, to the end that those who participated have grown in knowledge, skills, and the enjoyment of living. And whereas during her tenure of service to the school district and community, she did provide strong leadership, guidance, and management skills to improve the instructional and recreational programs while filling the following positions as a school board member. Vice President of the board, three years. Treasurer of the board, two years. Clerk for the board, one year. She was also committee chair for the Financial Stability and Efficiency Committee for one year and for the Student Services Committee for one year. Community Vice Chair for Business Services one year, Communication slash Public Relations for one year, 
and community member for the communication slash public relations for two years and recreation and community services for one year. And they're also provided countless hours of research and effort in the constant improvement of the educational and recreational programs for this school district. And whereas her example of public commitment, unfailing energy and intellectual curiosity has provided inspiration and admiration to all those whose lives have been touched by association with her. And in particular to her many Board of Education colleagues and members of the educational profession. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Education of the School District of West Dallas, West Milwaukee et al, honor this woman for her notable contributions to the fields of public education and public recreation by her self-dedication to the principle of public service, her professional integrity, her personal interest in the education and recreational needs of the school district, that this expression of our warm appreciation and affection be formally recorded and presented to Heather Justum, and be it further resolved that a copy of this testimonial be formally recorded in the official minutes of the Board of Education of the School District of West Dallas, Milwaukee et al. So we also want to thank Heather for her service on the board and her time that she has spent there. So I think we can provide her a round of applause as well. So thank you very much. And I presume because Brandon hasn't come out that she has not come on Zoom. Um, so at this point, we just once again, thank those outgoing board members for your service here. And we look forward to working with you in the community uh, as we move forward and everything that we need to do here in the district. So thank you very much. So with that, we'll move on to our financial stability and efficiency workshop. Can I just... Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Can I leave? Uh, if, if that's what you would like to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go coach. Okay, so my, <laughs> I would love to stick around. <laughs> I gotta go coach the baseball. So okay. Awesome. Thank you. So I'll good. see you guys around for sure. All right, Bill. Thanks for being here. Thanks, thanks Thank you, Bill. Good luck. Keep it up here. Okay. Right. So we have our financial stability and efficiency workshop 4.1 health insurance marketing discussion. Brown and Brown benefit consultants and Miss Whitler. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much. So I just want to um, first introduce our friend, friendly and familiar faces over here. So we have Lorenzo. DiMatteo and Chris Messer from formerly Hayes, now Brown and Brown. And then our ladies from our um, benefits office, Je Jessica Johnson and Jill Rakowski. So um, just a little bit of context for this conversation. Each year, um, we're, well, we're always in conversation with our consultants regarding where we're at with our loss ratios. We put those in that information in our in board updates throughout the year, et cetera. Um, and all in effort to make sure that we're always making financially responsible decisions. So our loss ratios, have um, proven that you know year after year in recent times that it made sense for us to maintain our business with WE8. And so we thought at this time, it would make sense for us to bring this forward as a conversation with our board to kind of look at where, we're, where we've been with WEA and pros and cons of just going out to market or, or to bid or RFP. Any of those are kind of synonymous terms. Um, so there's no formal action that will take place tonight. There's no board action needed to say, we'll go to bid or to market for health insurance. Um, it'll be more of a informal discussion and we'll look to the board to see what you want to do and that's what we'll those are the steps that we'll take um, following this conversation so i'll turn it over to our consultants from brown and brown so to start the presentation we're just going to walk through some historical information regarding health insurance in the district um, as caitlin referenced we will then walk through some pros and cons of health insurance marketing request for bid Request for proposal are off RFP. Those are all really mean the same thing um, overall. And then just talk through what marketing and a rough implementation timeline would look like if you were to uh, go out to bid for health insurance, as well as wrap up with what next steps are. So the district has had a say long relationship with WEA Trust. It started in 1993. Um, and there are a number of reasons as to why the relationship has been going on since 1993. Um, part of it, a large part of it has been the service that has been provided to the district throughout the relationship, as well as the renewals throughout the relationship. Um, and WEA really showing that they want to partner with the district overall based on those renewals. But I know the rest of the team wanted to talk through just some of the service pieces that have gone on throughout the years. Uh, so Jessica, Jill, and I met and kind of discussed some of those, the stories that we hear um, and those that we don't and the complaints that we don't hear. And um, Jessica and Jill can speak to the very few complaints that we get from, from WA. And Jessica actually has a story of um, some above and beyond service, if you want to share that story. Sure. 
um, I had an employee a few months back. She had a, a billing issue and she was getting basically the runaround between her doctor's office, her physician's office, and um, the just the eight, standard 800 number customer service from WA. So I contacted to our account rep and she told me, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. She called our staff member personally and then I, um, who then, our staff member then reached out to me and asked um, if there was somewhere that she could write um, a letter about, you know, the um, customer service that she received. Because she was pretty much floored that like they called her. Um, other than that, I really haven't had any any complaints from WA or I don't know anything good or bad. I would say. I just, so I take that as a positive that I don't hear anything because most people, I guess, if they have something negative to say, then <laughs> they choose to hear about it. If there's something positive, you usually don't hear about it. So I really, but personally on my end, I, I love WA, that great customer service on my line. So I just wanted to share with you, I had spoken with um, an employee today who um, had not had our insurance initially and has recently switched to the WEA insurance from um, Blue Cross Blue Shields in which they have had horrendous experiences with through that particular um, insurance company. And um, she just wanted me to uh, express um, the uh, fact that through WEA, she got a live person on the phone immediately when she called um, versus her experiences through um, Blue Cross. She was on hold like forever and ever, press one for this, press two for this, and then they could never end up feeling out her questions or feeding out questions, whereas the individual that she had spoken with at um, uh, WEA insurance could give her absolutely every answer to every question that she had. And so she was very pleased um, with her experience through WEA. Okay. I wanted to share that with you guys. So we just kind of wanted to share that there's a number of reasons why we would stay or not stay with the company. And that just to provide some context, it's just the personal piece of it. Yeah. Lorenzo next will go through the dollars and why we sort of have stayed with WA over, over the years, but um, that personal piece matters for us. So we just wanted to share those stories. So just going through that, some of the historical renewals, meaning the increase then that hasn't passed on through premium over a period of time. So we started with 2018, it went through, um, really the 2022 renewal that we just just renewed with. So you can just see 2018, 6%, 2019, 10.2%, 2020, 4.3, 2021, 1.3, and then last year it was 5.8. Um, it was actually 4.8, but part of removing the post 65 retirees just added additional points to the active group. But um, what's important to notice with the renewals over this period of time is other than really 2019, we haven't seen any over 7.5%, which is combined medical and RX trend, meaning on average, that's what you'd expect um, medical and RX costs to increase uh, per year um, over time. But uh, part of that then plays into the loss ratio, right? So what has WEA actually paid out in claims compared to what the district has paid in premium? And you can see we have those listed here from 2017. 2021, so 2017, 98.7, uh, 2018, 93.3, uh, 2019, 90.7, and so on. Um, when we look at a loss ratio, we talk about expected renewals. So outside of just the claims that insurance company is paying, they also have to pay certain fees and taxes um, that is included as, as part of the cost on their end, as well as paying their administrative expenses. So the fees that they need to to pay the, the fees to pay their employees to um, uh, pay other other administrative costs. So when we look at a loss ratio. Generally, when we see between a low 
to mid 80s, we say that's generally a trend increase for about seven and a half percent that I referenced earlier. You can see by the loss ratio you've had over the past couple of years, you know, you've the lowest you've had is 84.6. Otherwise, it's been closer to you know, almost 100% um, on average, which, you know, if that case is the case, we'd expect a much higher renewal. So when I say commitment from WEA to partner with the district, uh, that's, what I, that's what I referenced in terms of the historical renewals based on the loss ratios they've had over time. And then just one other comment, uh, the district does have a cap for the next renewal, meaning in the worst case scenario, um, this was part of our negotiation a few years ago with WBA, which also just goes to the commitment to want to work with the district. Um, the cap is 9.9% um, for this upcoming renewal. Um, I would just say in general, I mean, speaking in isolation about WBA, I've got a few notes here. The exceptional service is a recurring theme with any client that does or has worked with WEA. That goes both on the member side of things, but also on the employer or even on the consultant side of things. Lorenzo just mentioned it, the commitment to partnership. They want to know what's going on. They want to help. And the commitment to partnership that I see from them repeatedly is at least the most recent rate caps, right? This is a long-term insurance carrier partner of the districts that in this case we're talking about, there was no market competitive option we went to them in discussion and in the midst of a long-term partnership, they decided to throw out, again, we negotiated, but an extra two years and rate caps, right? So commitment to partnership, that's predictability for the district. So that is a very big deal. It's something that is not commonplace. And that goes to the renewal predictability. The rest of it, the nail on the head here, when we talk loss ratios. So part of what we do every year when we're looking at fully insured renewals is essentially a renewal justification. Does the claim, does our underwriting match with what we're seeing based on the claims that we see, based on the fees that we know, we would generally expect much higher renewals than we see from WEA. They do an exceptional job at managing the renewal process. One other thing too, that's not included here, but that's relevant, very relevant is the programming. You know, I mean, while all insurance carriers are out there trying to add new programming to help manage cost, member experience, they're repeatedly pushing the envelope, trying to add new programs to help with all of that. And they do a nice job there. So again, I mean, as I sit here, WEA does a very nice job. And for these reasons, I can see why, you know, the district has continued to want to partner with WEA. So I want to go through then pros and cons of going conducting a health insurance marketing or a request for bid. So um, the first piece of being a pro is just checking the market for the premium. So the amount that the district pays for health insurance, um, part of going through that bid process is just confirming is the bid competitive from what we would see in the market overall. Now, part of that then can provide potential leverage with the WEA trust for the world, depending on what the actual proposals are in the market. If they are competitive, that can assist us with the renewal negotiation. But the other piece of that is, in my mind, a con is there's always a potential for a carrier to want to buy business, meaning that uh, you are uh, a full insured group, meaning that they would want your, potentially want your business. And if that is the case, we would, as part of the bid request in the second year, rate cap or a second year uh, cap for that renewal. Um, but one of the benefits we talked about with WEA has just been their commitment to those, the renewal process and the overall called steady renewals over time compared to you know, a large renewal increase. And then overall, just the marketing or bid process can provide education to the district on what else is in the marketplace, understanding what carriers are, are out there as well as just what network options. So when I say network options, that means the carriers that are considered in network or contracted with the insurance provider. So benefits have an in and out of network benefit and some carriers have different network options um, compared to what the PA may have, which could be uh, potentially uh, provide better discounts, but may not as well. Um, and part of that then is 
the disruption overall to staff and 365 retirees as a con. So speaking of networks, if you were to go out to bid and make a change in insurance carriers, one of the major disruption factors for members are is a change in providers, meaning that they may need to change the position that they're going to in order to have that network benefit coverage. In addition to that, um, the change in benefits overall. So things such as the deductibles, co-pays, co-insurance, those things we can ask the insurance market to match the benefit design. But some of the detailed benefits for coverage um, that are filed with the state between insurance carriers may be different in, in the full insured arena, you know, an area that we don't really have an opportunity to change. So there may be other benefit changes um, by changing carriers that we can't control. And then the last piece, which is a major one as well in terms of disruption, is the prescription drug formulary change. And what a formulary is for a prescription drug uh, is really what defines what's covered under the plan, as a, what drugs are covered under the plan. And each insurance carrier will manage that differently. So you may have someone on a prescription drug today with WEA, where the change insurance carriers that drug may not be covered or it may be covered at a different cost share. And that obviously is a disruptive to members. Um, it's difficult to be able to determine uh, the, that disruption specifically just because of the amount of data we're able to get. So um, that is generally when you make a change a disruptive piece as well. Uh, another thing that WEA is doing today that is say, unique is that they are providing reimbursements to ATI for physical therapy. Um, that may not be able to be administered by other carriers or may not be able to provide that same amount. Um, that's just due to overall the contract agreements that they may have in place. And then finally, this is a, a major one as well, is that today WEA has worked with the district as partnered to complete the 365 retiree billing. And prior to the retiree change, they're also doing post-65 retiree billing as well. Um, that has taken Say so to get that set up was a lot of work and commitment from WEA. If you were to change insurance carriers, I'm not sure many would be able to, to do it. And if they were, the work to get that done would uh, take time, not just with the carrier, but also on the, time, the team here. Um, in addition to that, though, if the carrier wasn't able to do it and you wanted to continue to have someone build the uh, retirees directly, um, that would most likely come at additional cost for the third party to do that. But Jill, I know you can speak to as well the, the time there for the billing process. Yeah, so one thing I want to remind um, the board about is um, how when our teachers retired, um, and some of them as they're still retiring, actually most of them as they're still retiring, um, they have what's called a benchmark. So a benchmark is a, um, a plateau in which the district pays no more than a certain um, amount based upon their fifth year's insurance premium. Um, so with that being said, there's all kinds of different calculations based upon when they retired and how long they continue to receive insurance. And that is something that WEA has um, worked really hard at uh, being like on top of and taking care of um, immediately prior to them even reaching the age of 65 and reaching their benchmarks. Um, prior to WEA uh, taking on that task, um, it was um, quite a laborious piece that maybe was not handled appropriately. Um, and I feel that it has um, kept the district. Yeah, it created efficiencies in yes, our, in, huge efficiencies. I mean, in the time that it took, we, we spent days with, in conference room with WEA to set this up. And that has paid off immensely, immensely in time saved. Arrears. And arrears, right payments, it's now they're paying WEA directly, you know, it's not being um, right to the district right. um, for their health insurance. Yeah, 
some questions that I you can ask. Yeah, Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> can you just clarify for me how we fund that, like our, because we have our, our building on 93rd Street. So I'm just for our clinic. So how does that play in with WEA and how would that be if we, like, if we did go out and look for other bids, um, how does that affect that? Yeah. Was that? Yeah, go ahead, Chris. So currently today, based on, so there's an agreement with WEA, the $10,000 per month reimbursement plus $150 per non visit reimbursement. When we look at the annual renewal that we receive from WEA, it includes that reimbursement as part of the overall premium. So today with the premium share, the cost of the clinic is being split between employer and employee, okay. given the contribution strategy. I know because I looked in the last few weeks at the 1122 renewal calculation, there was about $725,000 in reimbursements included in that calculation. So if we were going to look at the market, we want to make sure that we're looking at premiums that would include clinic reimbursement, assuming that's a strategy that the district wants to continue to pursue, just so essentially we're looking apples to apples as we evaluate barriers. questions so from a timeline for the, the marketing process and implementation so we're having a discussion today just um, about the marketing process overall uh, if we were to go out to bid we release that to the markets um, towards the end of this month early next month to receive bids um, for the end of may uh, early june uh, in which case we would have finalist discussions in June, uh, end of June, early July, with determining the, the vendor in July for implementation in August through December. So overall, um, we would like to have a decision then on insurance care come, come July, just given the time we need to implement as well as communicate um, to staff. So um, when I first was on the board, this is one thing that was on the docket originally for us to look at was looking at WA trust insurance compared to other vendors. At that time, a lot of people who a lot of districts that had WA trust were leaving WA trust and were going to other vendors. So it was another kind of cost saving measure that districts were using um, at that point um, after all the other cost saving measures that act then had put in place had kind of been used up. So we, to my knowledge, have not gone to bid for health insurance um, for some time to look and see what the what the market would bear for us as a district. So with that in mind, you guys have questions about what that would process would look like um, or you know feelings about whether or not we want to do that. It has been brought up a number of times from the community as a, as a point where we can save money. I would like to stay on the record that we will not be able to save enough money to build a new high school, but um, uh, it is a possibility that we might be able to save money. We technically don't know unless we go to bid. Otherwise it's just all guesswork. Mm -hmm. Question. Okay, so the, in terms of like the relationship with WIA, we go to bid after since what are nineteen ninety two. No, does is that seen as you know disrupting that relationship? Is that or are they going to be in in play in the market? Are they going to bid or are they just going to come back with a renewal? It's kind of two questions. In there. I'll just answer how I would expect us to handle it. So even though there is a rate cap in, in play, I would essentially set it off as contract offering from them so we go to bid I fully expect them to compete and strongly on your know, business uh, just because we haven't gone to market does we, we discuss marketing we discuss the market every year with the district and we also use I would say the threat of marketing with WEA in our negotiations um, so we have used that as leverage in the past but I would expect them to compete we'll give them a heads up certainly we have a good relationship with them it would not be unexpected 
if WAWM goes to market. So um, while maybe a potential disruption, don't fight for your business. So I've had to handle these types of benefit renewals and, and outreach in the past in a previous role. And I, I think I think it always makes sense to do the due diligence. Um, I, I think it shows that we are taking the steps needed to be respectful of our taxpayers' dollars. I'll be honest, I'd be surprised. It, my fear is the same that's been brought up before. I, I think a lot of companies are going to give you a really good cost for that first year and maybe even that second year, but two years down the road, we're probably going to be looking at a similar, a similar situation where we'll be going to market because we'll see significant increases. Um, and it's been a while since I've had to deal with it on a, any kind of a basis, honestly, but today's day and age, really anything, if I'm right, anything under 10% really seems to be pretty good year, year to year. And the, and the rates we've been getting uh, have been really strong. Um, I think it makes sense to do it. I'd be surprised if we did anything that makes sense to leave with them, but, uh, but I'd be interested in seeing the data. I agree with Brian. I think it's important. I mean, just, just I think we do need to do our due diligence. It looks like we haven't done this in what, since 2009? 2009. So, I mean, it's been 13 years almost. So I think that, I think it's important. I think it's something that also we have heard members of the public bring up. And so, you know, if we, we have a very strong relationship with Lucvia, I, 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 I agree with Brian. I think that, you know, I, I don't see them not, you know, just, I see them coming back and, and wanting to, to have our business. But I think it's good for us to always look at our options. Um, I think things are constantly changing in the insurance world. My husband does this for a living, so I get to hear about it all the time. So I think, yeah, I definitely think it's worth, at least that's how it's worth looking at. If I could throw another comment in there too, I know Lorenzo mentioned at least the second year, certainly we push for a third. From our perspective, relationship is a big deal, partnership, mm -hmm. consistency. We're always concerned about the impact to your employees mm -hmm. like you would be as well. So that's a big deal. And I work with a lot of school districts. I will tell you every district is very different and their appetite for disrupting their employees is very different as well. So I know that you know the team mentioned some very positive aspects of WEA. And I would say as we get through this process, the disruption, the willingness to change will probably have to be balanced out with some of the financial aspects. So that'll be, I expect that to all be part of the discussion once we, assuming we do go to the market, we have that conversation. No, I would, I'm sorry. No, uh, I was just gonna say, I'd agree with that because I think if it's a negligible difference, um, I, I think the relationship that we have, uh, as well as that lack of disruption is something that needs to be considered. Um, I know, I think many of us know personally how disrupting it can be to change insurance carriers and to have to deal with different benefits and, and everything that goes along with that. So I, I know personally that's going to be a big factor that I consider when looking at all of that information. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was, when we're, when, if we do this, is it possible to get some more granularity with what's coming back here besides just like our historical rates and our historical loss ratios because we're talking about those are the things that we're looking at but we're also saying hey they offer this they do this the work with arrears like what does that cost us to do if you know if we have to take it back what does you know what what essentially what is that cost that they're providing within uh, their service that they're providing what is the cost of doing any of the other pieces the other benefits that they have so that when we're looking at these different pieces we're not just looking at like oh percentage that's great okay it's cheaper it's like what does it help us because if they're not doing the arrears or they're not doing the retirement or we have to shift over like what's the cost of having to then go out and do more uh, meetings and get the word out and all the documentation to be like hey you're gonna go here now because they're cheaper like we need all those other pieces for the costs because I think just looking at our renewal percentage and our loss, it doesn't really give us a picture beyond just straight up costs. And it sounds like because we've had a 30 year relationship with these, with this company, we probably should look at more as to why they have been such a benefit to us or not a benefit to us based on what else they're providing. It's a great comment or question if you don't mind, I'll address it because what we'll ultimately do when we the marketing again assuming that we do is we'll at least for starters we'll have much more dialogue with the team
team, but we'll want to see proposals from the carrier market really matching current plan designs today, right? So again, we know more apples to apples, but some of the other key features as well, like wellness today, WEA offers a robust wellness program that's embedded within the fully insured program. Maybe another carrier doesn't quite have that. Okay, if they don't have that, what's the cost if we want to source a separate one? Right, so we'll look at a PEPM in that case. Retiree billing, we know from the marketplace, I haven't looked in a little bit, three, four dollars, maybe PEPM or something like that. And so we will articulate that in the, the bid process. WE, and I can't recall if they're doing it here or not. One thing that they had done historically is pay for Cobra. And I know today that the partnership is with EBC, but shaking head, maybe they don't cover that, but historically they've covered some things. We'll make sure that we lay those out so we're not missing anything when we're looking comparatively across barriers. Jane, did you have any thoughts? Well, I, I had the benefit of hearing this in committee, so I've had some time to think about it. And I would just say that, um, can you talk to us a little bit about the proposal process? How is that open to carriers and, um, you know, beyond the timeline? Like, how many proposals do we, um, you know, look at, or how does that work? Yeah, so I can tell me that. Yeah, so generally what will happen is um, just based on our experience and knowledge of this marketplace and health insurance, we will put together a, a lengthy bid document request for bid document okay. that will outline the timeline for when responses are needed, the expectations and history of the district, the benefits that are being offered, and the Brown and Brown team will then release that to so the number of carriers we would need to decide that overall. But um, again, it will be those that, based on our experience and knowledge, may be a fit for the district overall, just based on the network and um, experience that we've had. In other so you would vet that. them ahead of time. You would decide um, for us on our behalf, correct? Correct. We would communicate that with the rest of the internal team and just confirm. But generally, we would work through that process and confirm okay. that on your behalf. Okay. Yeah, to, to make sure we're all on the same page, we will have extensive dialogue with the team. We'll propose the carriers that would see the bid, then we'll release the bid, and then ultimately we'll discuss. So this always comes up. Every district wants things handled a little bit differently, but we'll handle them, the bids. We'll discuss them internally. We're not disclosing bits and pieces here or there. Ultimately, we'll get to a point once we see the numbers. Okay, do we want to have finalists in? Let's just say we have two or three carriers are competitive, maybe just for sake of doing it, we have a finalist discussion. And then at that point, we have further discussion with the group. And then maybe we have a couple and say, okay, those are likely finalists. Let's have them sharpen their pencils and then we'll make a decision and then we'll go from there. So that's a very high level how I would expect the process to work. So I would say that I would be open to continuing the process, definitely. And then, um, as I, I talked about in committee, I really feel strongly about looking beyond the financial and looking, and we talked about in committee about even like, you know, waiting, like you give points to certain things. So disruption, employee disruption, in my mind is weighted heavily. So like it would get more points right, than other things. And so as Brendan said, you know, if we could see all of those, we could actually almost form, formulate a rubric and say, you know, based on this, I really feel that, um, you know, WEA is the best or not for, for our district. So I would just want things to be, go beyond the financials and then to continue the process. Can you bring that up? I just will address it. We'll have further discussion with the team, but we have at certain times put together scorecards. Essentially, mm -hmm. I will tell right. you what I've seen, and this isn't right or wrong. What I've seen in the public sector is because the board still wants to maintain discretion. That if they're completing a scorecard and it essentially indicates one, one kind of final answer, but based on the collective discussion of the group, they want to go a different direction. Sometimes because that's still subject to open record and there's other considerations there. I've seen public sector steer away a little bit from scorecards, but we're happy to talk further about that and then to have discussion and we can provide a sample if there's interest in the scorecard process. 
So what I'm hearing is that the board is open to the possibility of going to bid for health insurance to ensure that we're doing our due diligence on the process, especially since we haven't done it for some time. Uh, not because we're unhappy with what WA has been doing for the district by any stretch of the imagination, but because as stewards of taxpayer dollars, we need to make sure that we're doing that due diligence to ensure that we're not missing something. Not that we think we are missing something, but and we and I and we all fully understand that means that there's a lot of work that's now just been added to a lot of people's plates. And I do apologize on our behalf for that, for doing that. But I do think that since it has been some time that we do take, go through the process, um, see what's out there and, um, you know, look into this a little bit further. One thing I would be interested in, because sometimes from staff, um, I've heard that the benefits are less important to them than the salary. And so I wanted to see maybe once we get further down this process, we might be able to survey staff and say, you know, would you care if we switched insurances? Yes or no, if you had to pay them the same amount or pay less, um, if, even if that meant that you would have to do things like change doctors. Um, just because I, through the time I've been on the board, I've heard that, well, I don't care about my insurance. I want the dollars in my bank account every month. And so I don't know if that's a wide or a narrow you know, viewpoint, but if we survey the staff and just ask them their opinion about us doing this while we're getting the bid information back, I think then we can use that um, as part of our whole decision-making process at that point. Just a suggestion. I don't know what how the rest of the board feels about that, but since, since you know, staff involvement and how this is gonna obviously directly affect staff is a big piece of what we're talking about and maybe hearing from them um, in some way, shape or form. It doesn't have to be a lengthy survey, but just kind of give us an idea of Yes, definitely stay. No, definitely go. I don't care. Um, something along those lines. So I agree. We're not going to we're not going to change for a, a small amount. It's going to have to be a pretty large full change in the amount that it costs the district for us to consider it because of everything else involved. Any other questions or comments? All right. Well, thanks to Hayes for joining us tonight. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. So that's the only thing we have on the docket. So I look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.